All right, during this lecture, we're going to be talking about the gel shift or the EMCA, which stands for Electrophoretic Molecular Shift Assay. Uh, this technique is usually used in order to identify whether our segment of DNA is actually bound by proteins or not. And uh, it's, it's rather easy. It's uh, definitely not as complicated as other molecular techniques. So essentially, we know that uh, if we, for example, add a fragment of DNA onto an autoradiogram, obviously after uh, labeling it, we will, uh, we will figure out that uh, since uh, if we place the samples on top and uh, the electric autoradiogram, obviously there's the negative pole is at the top and the positive pole at the bottom, since the DNA fragment has a phosphate backbone, therefore it is going to be negatively, uh, is going to be negative, so the DNA is going to be moving from the top to the bottom. Now, uh, essentially what this technique does is, uh, when we, uh, or what it says is the fact that when we have this uh, protein, this is going to be decreasing the mobility of this uh, DNA fragment. So essentially, let's, let's imagine uh, we have this autoradiogram and this fragment of DNA alone actually moves towards uh, the next to the bottom. If we have a protein that binds specifically onto this, the, this DNA fragment, it is going to, instead of being here after the, in the autoradiogram, it is going to be up there. Well, this is because, first, it is going to, for two main reasons. First, it is because it's going to be decreasing its negative uh, charge. Therefore, it, uh, the less negative the fragment is, the less it is, um, uh, the more difficult it is uh, to pass through the um, the gel, and second of all, is going to be increasing its molecular weight. Now, so uh, let's dive, let's just dive into the technique uh, step by step. So, how do we actually get to this conclusion? How how do we get to the step that we explained earlier? Well, first of all, all we have to do is take a fragment of DNA. And now, it could be uh, we we could take it from a cell uh, using restriction enzyme, for example, or we can just uh, chem uh, synthesize it chemically. After that, uh, we have to label this, and uh, to, uh, so that it can appear on the electroradiogram. And then we can just incubate these, uh, this DNA fragment with uh, the proteins that we presume that they are going to be binding onto this, uh, uh, onto this fragment. After that, all we have to do is place it on the electrophoretic gel. And just like we said earlier, we can test whether uh, there is the presence of uh, the, the proteins that we added actually bind to the uh, DNA or RNA fragment uh, that we mentioned before. So uh, essentially, just like we mentioned before, is uh, the presence or the binding of the, D of the proteins on the DNA is going to be slowing the movement of the DNA or RNA fragment down. Therefore, it is going to, the mobility is going to be decreasing uh, significantly sometimes. And uh, now we could see two, for example, two bands. Now, what does this say? Well, this says that we either have a monomeric or a dimeric form that of a protein that is bound. For example, if it, if it is monomeric, then uh, it's, if it is dimeric and only one of these proteins bound, then it is going to be uh, like near the bottom. And if two proteins bound, it is going to be slowing it even further, and it is going to be above. Now, this is one thing. And uh, yeah, essentially two main bands. Sometimes we might have this, for example, the same protein that binds onto the DNA fragment. Uh, some of these proteins bound, uh, bind, bound to these DNA uh, segments, and some did not. Therefore, the ones that actually bound will be on the, uh, near the top, and the ones that did not bind were going to, are going to be near the bottom. So. Uh, yes, one more thing we actually have to mention is that, for example, if we identify that there are some specific, uh, some proteins uh, present inside this mixture and it binds to our DNA segment. Now, what is the next step? How do we know what these proteins are? Essentially, what we do is we add a uh, labeled, uh, the, like, first of all, we have to uh, make sure that these uh, segments that we have are labeled. And this is to make sure that uh, th this is, uh, this helps in the technique even further later than down the line. So we make sure that these segments are labeled, and then we add non-labeled uh, specific and non-specific competitors. Now, for example, if after we incubated these, and uh, then we uh, like for a period of time, and then after that we add this same, um, uh, the, these same fragments onto an electrophoretic gel, and we have, we have an electro autoradiogram, and then after we read it, if we see these bands that we saw earlier, uh, if their color has faded. Uh, then we can identify, we can know that these non-specific competitors, sorry, these specific competitors that were not labeled are the ones that are going to be binding onto this DNA segment. So, for example, let me, let me just re repeat myself. So, essentially what we said is we have this DNA segment and we are going to be having proteins that are labeled. Now, 
what happens here is that after we add non-labeled but specific competitor that we presume are specific, uh, we add non uh, non-labeled specific uh, competitors and to this mixture. Eventually, these are going to be binding onto this DNA segment, and the ones that are labeled are going to go off. Therefore, this uh, after we do an auto, uh, perform an autoradiogram and we want to read these bands, these bands are essentially going to be uh, of a lighter color because the labeled ones have already left. So this is the job shift technique.